Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm presenting you with uh, my new Delhi driver, a 2010 Mark II facelift or Mark II 0.5 as you want to call it uh, for Focus 1.6 Z Tech. Um, I'm replacing the Merc uh, for, for the Focus for the simple reason that the Mercedes doesn't have the same use as it was intended to when I bought it a year ago. Uh, the Merc has been an excellent car, big, practical and also uh, not bad on fuel and I bought it at the time to replace the E46 Coupe uh, which was petrol and uh, a bit less practical uh, compared to this one of course but also my wife used to have a Mark 1 uh, KA and the Mercedes used to uh, make up for the difference in size but again she replaced the KA with a uh, decent size Focus, which means that the Mercedes is now a little bit redundant in terms of use. And um, although it is a very good uh, car, uh, the fact is that it's, it doesn't really have the same use. And also, uh, being a di an older diesel and an automatic, the running costs are a bit higher compared to a normal hatchback. So I consider there many options, so I just decided to sell the Merc and go for uh, something similarly priced uh, Ford Focus. Um, my wife has the Mark III, but I don't think the miner will be enough to buy a Mark III. It will be one with a very high mileage. So therefore, I went instead for a, a 2010 car. Uh, one of the last ones, I think the uh, uh, two, Mark 2.5 was sold until uh, um, end of 2010, beginning of 2011 and um, as some of you might know the uh, Mark II was launched in uh, around 2005 replacing the uh, new Edge design Mark I and it, uh, well, when it was launched it was uh, it had a little bit of a criticism because it the design wasn't as radical as the mark one but what uh, lost in radicality in terms of design it gained uh, certainly in refinement in refinement and size and quality of materials now um, back to this car uh, this is a 2010 as I said before I've bought this car of a dealer who is was selling it at over a thousand pounds below their usual market price for two very good reasons. This car has had um, category D uh, mark on its history, um, or it's called now category N. Um, the damage on this car was uh, actually um, a small damage. It was actually non-structural, and it was actually. Um, on the rear passenger door basically this one here this one here that was damaged uh, the repair seemed to have been really well executed as I see no problems with um, the uh, the door gaps or anything like that but the telltale sign is usually uh, where you could see the marks of repair I usually it's just around here the bolts where the paint has scuffed and worn out and also in here as well but everything else is absolutely spot on uh, I see no problems at all and um, that was one of the reasons why uh, the car was a bit cheaper also it had no service history yes I know it's just basically uh, haven't followed the rules of buying a second-hand car which is buying a car with no history but the amount of money that I have saved in pushing the car like this that leaves me with plenty of money to play with and um, do all the service myself and do the repairs myself and still leave me with money in the pocket compared if I bought one with a full service history and uh, with supposedly work that has been done so let's have a look at this car. I did open the doors earlier on because unfortunately the fob isn't really working and is a battery replacement, but I will come to that on another video. First of all, uh, before I start the car, I'm going to open the bonnet. And this one, it has one of these spare keys, um, which is normally one of those keys that are given on those eBay kits that are given uh, when the uh, mechanism goes bang. There we go. Just try to 
open this. There you go. And here it is the engine. It is not too bad. It's not overly clean, uh, really. It's just I do. Uh, and when I was looking at cars, there were so many cars where the engine was fully dressed and fully clean. You couldn't really see if there were any original. Uh, leaks or anything like that. So this one is a bit more honest than some of the other ones I've seen. It's not too bad. There's a bit of dust. Um, I did look uh, at the car um, uh, before, so there were no uh, uh, no uh, nasty leaks or anything like that. Everything looked uh, pretty much on point. And uh, there you go. Of course, just a bit of rust on the bolts and some places as such, uh, but this is something that I will address at a later stage. So, um, the car, not uh, by not having survey history, it means that I don't know if uh, the uh, cam belt was replaced, but uh, that's not really too bad, because the car is only 10 years old, and it has uh, just, uh, just under 100,000 miles, and according to uh, the service um, a maintenance schedule by Ford, uh, the cam belt should be changed at 125,000 miles or at 10 years of age, whichever comes first. So the car is right on point um, in terms of the cam belt replacement and of course the water pump and the idler should also be replaced at the same time. Bear in mind that I've saw a lot of cars for sale at these Mark IIs and also uh, Mark 2.5s that were on sale on many dealers, and many of them didn't have a record of the cam belt ever being replaced. They were, this is one of the newest that I saw, and all of the other ones from 2009 and beyond, even cars from 2005 and 2006 of the Mark IIs, no, many of them didn't have records of the cam belt being replaced. So, and you were paying way more uh, than you, what I have paid for this car. Now, let's have a look at the interior. I just like to point out that the car has had an MOT on in July, so basically almost like a fresh MOT. The car only did like 40, or 60, 40 to 60 miles since the last MOT, and there was a few advisories. It failed initially on a few things like the, the rear tires, and uh, in terms of bulbs and. Uh, other bits and bobs here and there, but that was rectified. Uh, there's still some advisories which I will be addressing on a different video. Now let's just have a look in here in the engine. Oops, let's turn this off. Everything absolutely works. So the engine starts really nicely. No hesitations, no smoke, and no other weird noises either. It has a usually uh, some, a little bit of a piston flap or rattle, but that's normal on uh, all these uh, um, uh, aluminium engines. It happens in the uh, um, rubber kitchen engines as well, but then it quietens down at this, uh, after a while. It runs nice and smoothly, it does respond very well. And, uh, and it's just behaves uh, quite well actually. All the electrics work, radio, aircon, uh, nice and cold. Uh, although it probably could be a little bit colder, let's face it. But um, it could be just also when I tested it, it was an extremely hot day. And uh, normally, and the car being in the sun takes a little bit longer to uh, get uh, cool. Now, the interior, uh, it has. The, the usual marks of a hundred thousand mile car, to, to be to be honest. Uh, these lights appear to be flickering, but it is not the actual car itself. It is just because I'm using my phone in order to record this video. So it looks like they're flickering, but in reality they're actually not. Uh, everything absolutely works. The aircon. Uh, everything all the right, all the vents and all. There's no clogs, no plays on the steering. The biting point of the clutch is actually quite good. In some of the cars that I've tested, the biting point was really, really high, and which um, gives indication that the clutch will be due for replacement anytime soon. Uh, it has the rear uh, the armrest, which I think it's very nice and useful. 
and funnily enough, my wife's Mark III Z Tech doesn't have an armrest, which I find it actually very strange. But hey, never mind. Her loss is my gain. Uh, the, uh, the quick clear windscreen heater also does seem to work. You can notice a uh, change of the engine tone and the same for rear uh, window. And uh, not really much more. No squeaks on the, the um, um, on the power steering either, and no leaks. I've popped the cuff for uh, for a couple of days now, and don't seem to have any leaks on the floor or anything like that. All this seems to be working. Uh, the only thing that the car might need to have is a bit of a clean. Uh, you can notice some uh, stains and all that, and the car has no uh, mats or even. Um, and also noticing here all these like some splattered stains. I think this might be due to some harsh chemicals that might have been used to uh, clean the car. Uh, and these, unfortunately, these painted plastics are very prone, uh, are very sensitive to um, are very sensitive to, um, to to certain harsh chemicals. So. Uh, uh, but I'm going to replace these. These are not too badly priced actually, but it's just for just for a matter of, I probably don't have to but then just for a matter of aesthetics um, I'm going to uh, to have them replaced. Uh, I'm going to thoroughly hoover and shampoo. I have um, actually a upholstery uh, machine at home so I can use it. The seats, the carpet, uh, give a good clean also to the headlining which is actually not too bad. Uh, the headlining is actually quite clean. Um, I assume that there were children in the car before because you normally notice certain marks and certain stains on the sides and also when you pull the uh, back of the seats you see and probably some pets like a doggy or some uh, thing like that but never mind everything can get nicely clean the car doesn't really smell it's just really uh, like a still smell of air freshener uh, which I absolutely hate and at least one thing with this delay he didn't coat the car and the dashboard and all the other surfaces in the car in that nasty crappy silicone spray that many um, uh, dealers seem to do these days and let's have a look at the boot in here the bustle shelf is missing but it is in a different place in the house and I've already purchased new um, floor mats directly from Ford. They were just under £29 and uh, these are original ones so which will go in the car once the car is nicely and clean. Uh, everything in here, the spare wheel as well in here. Um, everything, there was no signs of marks of any shunts uh, in the rear either so everything is nice and tidy. So here you go. Uh, just a bit of a dent in here, but come on, for the price I've paid for the car, uh, I can't really complain. Uh, it, uh, someone fitted part one tyres, they're actually in very good condition, but I'm going to replace them at some point, uh, just just really for the, the peace of mind really. Um, I'm going to replace these as well, these are quite cheap. Uh, but everything else, it seems to be pretty straight, of course there's a few it's just not stress, it's just really just some stains. Um, uh, the tyres in the front are nearly new, which is a good thing. And then there's scuffing on the wheels. And uh, this is what we've got for now. So there we go, I think I have covered everything uh, about this car. Um, the first few jobs that I'm going to do will be obviously give it a good clean on the inside because I do love a nice and clean car and then I'm going to move on to do its, uh, its service um, on a different video I will be going through uh, the condition of the oil, air filter, uh, the spark plugs and all the other service items um, and I think that's what I will be doing next so see you in a later video take care